Hey students, Mr. Hames here. Today we are talking about dry ice. Before I talk about what this, what's going on right here, let's just talk about what dry ice is. Dry ice is solid carbon dioxide. Now we typically think of carbon dioxide as a gas because at temperatures that are naturally occurring on Earth, it is always a gas, okay? This room right now is filled with gas. That's what our atmosphere is. But like all gases, if you get it cold enough, it's eventually going to bring molecules closer together. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I did a video on thermal energy transfer. All that means is everything has something what's called thermal energy inside of it. If you touch something that feels hot, that means there's a lot of thermal energy inside the molecules of that substance. If you touch something and it feels cold, like dry ice, that means it's lacking thermal energy. Dry ice is just carbon dioxide in solid form right so this is a solid the molecules in a solid are really really close together but when you add thermal energy that means energy that's in this room the heat that's in this room when you add thermal energy it's going to warm this thing up if this gets warm enough the molecules are going to start moving and spread apart so all dry ice is is a gas carbon dioxide that's gotten so cold it's turned into a solid to be specific dry ice is about negative 109 degrees Fahrenheit. 109 below zero. That's pretty darn cold. Cold enough to make a gas solid. In fact, I measured it with this thermometer just a minute ago, and I couldn't even get the thermometer to work on something that that's cold. It got down to like negative 50, and then the thermometer just stopped working on me. It gave me an error read. All right, so let's talk about some investigations we can do with dry ice. One of my favorite things to do is probably the thing dry ice is kind of famous for in doing demonstrations is you can create a cloud with it. Now this stuff right here, it is quite literally the same thing as what a cloud is made of. This is a bunch of water, okay? I know it doesn't really look like a liquid, but what you're seeing is actually tons of tiny little water droplets that are all kind of floating in the air. It's a cloud. So water vapor that's in the air we don't really detect because it's how we perceive it dry. It's in a gas form. But when it gets cold enough, it will turn into a liquid. So dry ice, really cold. That's why when I hold it, you can kind of see there's some fog coming off of it, right? All of this fog is not the dry ice itself. It's actually water in the air that got close to the dry ice and turned back into a liquid, okay? Pretty cool. Now we can speed up this process if we take something with a lot of thermal energy, like water, that's much warmer than even the air around it. It holds on to more thermal energy. And I put the dry ice in it, I cause that dry ice to turn into a gas more quickly. Sidebar, when dry ice turns into a gas, it's a process called sublimation. Sublimation. You're using word, used to using words like condensation, precipitation, freezing, melting, evaporation, when talking about states of matter change, but, dry ice, all that is, it goes straight to a gas. It skips the liquid phase, all right? So that's called sublimation. Anyway, some things that you can do with dry ice that are really cool is you can add it to water to produce fog. And the cool thing is the hotter the water, the more fog produced. So as you can see, this water was much hotter. So it's causing that dry ice to sublimate much more quickly. So all of this white stuff that you're seeing is not the dry ice. I want to reiterate, this is a cloud. This is water that used to be a gas in this warmer air that got close to the really moist, wet environment that is in this pot, a lot of water in this pot, creating a very humid, moist environment. And when I suddenly drop something that's extremely cold into that environment, it rapidly causes all those molecules to condense. This might look like something that you see a mad scientist do. 
And when we look at this at first, to the untrained eye, this looks like a chemical reaction, chemistry. Uh, but this is actually a physical reaction. It's a physical change because we're not changing what the substance truly is. Dry ice is solid CO2, and when it sublimates, it turns into gas CO2. It's CO2 either way. It's the same chemical. It just changes its state that it's in. Another physical change you're seeing is water vapor as a gas, H2O, is turning into a liquid H2O, which is what you see in this cloud right here. Super fun. Now I have a bunch of boiling water upstairs. We're gonna try to make a bigger cloud here in just a minute just to see what it looks like. While we're waiting, I'm gonna show you a couple other demonstrations that are pretty cool. Um, this is some water that I had uh, left over from a demonstration. I dyed it blue uh, for that demonstration. That's why it is blue. Uh, I'm gonna show you something cool uh, that you can do with dry ice. If uh, we take a little bit of soap, we stir it in. <laughs> baby spoon. You can tell what stage of life I'm in. Stir it up and just all I did, this is dish soap, water, and food coloring. And stir it in there so we get soapy water. Uh, a teacher I used to work with, Mrs. Kovac, she used to call this Marge's experiment. Kind of a cool experiment. And you'll see why here if you've ever seen Marge Simpson. She's got blue hair that stacks up way high. I'm going to get a piece of dry ice. I'm going to submerge it in here. And we're going to see if we can create Marge Simpson's hair. Hold on, try a smaller piece. Okay, I'm gonna hold it underwater. All right, so you can see bubbles are collecting. And those bubbles aren't clear bubbles, you can't see through them. But the reason we call this Marge's experiment is because it kind of towers up. Watch this. Okay, I can I can pop the bubbles and I get a little bit of uh, that fog kind of release, which is cool. All that's happening is the bubbles are creating a tension that's holding a gas inside of it. So when you have a bubble, right, there's, there's air inside of the bubble. Uh, well, that air had water vapor in it and that air is condensing because it's getting colder and it's holding the condensed water droplets, the fog inside the bubbles. So when I pop the bubbles, we actually get fog coming out of the bubbles, which is really neat. So what we have here is a tub filled with dry ice blocks. Even though we can't see them, that dry ice is slowly turning into a gas again, which is filling this tub with cold air that is mostly concentrated of carbon dioxide, CO2. So it's filling it with air. What I'm gonna try to do is blow bubbles in here and see what happens. Well, hey, what's going on here? Why are the bubbles floating? What's happening is when I blow bubbles down in the bin that's full of dry ice is I'm actually blowing them into an invisible ocean of carbon dioxide. Because what's happening is that cold dry ice is slowly warming and turning into a gas. Dry ice is carbon dioxide, so most of the air down in that tub is CO2 or carbon dioxide. And when I blow bubbles in there, the bubbles float because carbon dioxide is dense so it sinks it's also cold because it just turned into a gas so it's a colder gas than the other gases in the atmosphere already and cold things and dense things sink so all of that air stays in the container it doesn't rise up out of it it stays right down in there so when i blow the bubble it goes down to the level of where that co2 is and it just kind of stays there on it all right, so the last demonstration I wanna show you is I'm gonna try to get rid of the rest of the dry ice and I'm gonna try to make a big cloud. Let's do it. We are going to try to create a big cloud with that boiling water you just saw. Here we go. Still pretty hot, it's not boiling anymore, but it's very hot. 
see if we can put it right there. You see from here to here, it's where I'm standing up. It's about waist high. Let's see how big we can make this cloud. Counting, three, two, one, go. Woo! It's very humid here suddenly. I'm getting very wet. Okay, so I've pretty much filled up to my ceiling a very large cloud. That water that was very hot is quickly cooling down because its thermal energy is leaving and going into the dry ice. The dry ice in return starts to turn into a gas very rapidly. And then in the air here, we have a lot, a lot of water suddenly condensing into water droplets. The cloud. And it looks like I have some sort of witch's brew, which is super awesome. Okay. Now I'm gonna show you what the floor looks like. Yeah, what? You're getting a little wet now because the floor, everything you see here has gotten wet. This is why I did not try this upstairs. Hopefully that blanket's not getting too wet there. And here it is continuing to warm up. This is why my job is the best, because I can do stuff like this. Hopefully you're enjoying this. Today we made a cloud. We literally made a cloud with uh, dry ice that I have to thank my sister-in-law Rachel for. She ordered some food. It was shipped in dry ice in order to keep that food frozen. So anyway, it benefited because we got to do some surprise science here. Playing with dry ice. You guys have a great day. Uh, thanks for staying with me. See you guys.